stop. Right now, you're doing something that's literally making you dumber, and you have no idea. Scientists just discovered that 94% of people have at least three of these brain-rotting habits. I had seven. This isn't about IQ tests or school grades. This is about the invisible ways your daily routine is rewiring your neurons to fail. And the worst part? You think these habits are normal. Most people think intelligence is fixed. You're either smart or you're not. But neuroscience destroyed that myth. Your brain is plastic. It reshapes itself based on what you do every single day. And here's the terrifying part. The habits you think are harmless are actually carving neural pathways that make critical thinking harder, memory weaker, and problem solving nearly impossible. Let's expose the 15 everyday habits that are secretly destroying your intelligence. And I promise number 11 will make you question everything you did today. Number one, digital zombification, the attention apocalypse. Four hours of scrolling every single day. You think you're relaxing, but brain scans tell a different story. Excessive screen time fragments your attention span into eight-second bursts. It destroys your prefrontal cortex's ability to focus deeply. It rewires your dopamine system to crave umpty stimulation. Stanford researchers found that heavy media multitaskers performed worse on every cognitive test, memory, attention, task switching. And the kicker? They rated themselves as above average in focus. You're not unwinding. You're training your brain to be permanently distracted. And distraction is the enemy of intelligence. Number two, chronic sleep neglect. I'll sleep when I'm dead. Famous last words for your brain cells. After just one night of poor sleep, your cognitive performance drops to legal intoxication levels. Your hippocampus physically shrinks. Your amygdala goes haywire. Sleep debt is cumulative. Every night you shortchange yourself, you're accumulating cognitive damage. High performers guard sleep like treasure. You're treating it like it's optional. Number three, instant gratification addiction. Swipe, click, consume, repeat. The marshmallow test proved it. Children who couldn't delay gratification struggled as adults. Every time you choose the quick dopamine hit over a delayed reward, you're weakening your prefrontal cortex. Smart people tolerate short-term discomfort for long-term gain. Lower intelligence grabs every quick fix and wonders why nothing improves. Number four, avoiding solitude. The University of Virginia ran a disturbing experiment. 67% of men and 25% of women chose to electrically shock themselves rather than sit quietly for 15 minutes. Physical pain was preferable to self-reflection. If you can't sit alone for 10 minutes without grabbing your phone, that's mental weakness. Intelligent minds use silence to process and solve problems. You're not avoiding boredom. You're avoiding yourself. Number five, the listening deficit. You're not listening. You're waiting to talk. Real listening requires holding complex information and processing new perspectives. That's exhausting, so lower intelligence zones out or interrupts. Smart minds learn from everyone. Lower minds assume they already know everything, so why listen? That assumption guarantees they'll never learn anything new. Number six, living on conversational autopilot, the small talk trap. Crazy weather, huh? Thank God it's Friday. If this is your conversational range, psychologists call it a low need for cognition. You don't enjoy thinking. Intelligent people crave conversations about ideas and possibilities. Lower intelligence stays surface level because depth requires effort. So they stay in the shallow end, wondering why life feels empty. Number seven, reflex rejection. That's stupid. That'll never work. Instant dismissal without exploration. This isn't wisdom. It's mental laziness disguised as critical thinking. Intelligent people engage with ideas first. They ask, what if this worked? Lower intelligence avoids the effort of thinking and chooses automatic rejection. 
every idea dismissed without consideration is a door closed to growth. That's just the first seven. And if even one of those hit a little too close to home, just wait. We've barely scratched the surface. The most damaging habits are still to come. Let's continue with number eight. Loud confidence, zero substance. The Denning-Kruger effect. The less you know, the more confident you feel. We all know this person. Talks over everyone, never admits ignorance, mistakes volume for validity. Real intelligence whispers, I don't know, and asks questions. Fake intelligence shouts and hopes nobody notices the emptiness. If you can't admit confusion, you're not confident, you're terrified of being exposed. Number nine, mental rigidity. That's not how we do things. Refusing new methods, not because they're wrong, but because they're different. Psychologists call this cognitive inflexibility, the inability to update your mental models when reality shifts. The world rewards adaptation, it punishes stubbornness. If your response to change is automatic rejection, you're not principled, you're scared. Number 10, conspiracy comfort. Flat Earth, chemtrails, astrology ruining your Tuesday. Conspiracies are cognitive junk food. They offer simple, dramatic answers to complex problems. Smart minds tolerate uncertainty and demand evidence. Lower minds grab the first exciting explanation and call it research. Every hour spent on conspiracies is an hour not spent solving actual problems. You're not woke, you're asleep. Number 11, magical thinking. Outsourcing logic to superstition. Lucky socks, avoiding the number 13, knocking on wood. Astrology determining your personality. It seems harmless, even charming, but psychologists call it magical thinking when your brain confuses correlation with causation. Here's what's actually happening. Every time you rely on superstition instead of evidence, you're training your prefrontal cortex to shut down. You're teaching your brain that feelings matter more than facts. Smart people ask, where's the evidence? Average people ask, where's my lucky charm? One builds neural pathways for critical thinking. The other builds pathways for delusion. Number 12, instruction worship. Recipe says 20 minutes, but the food is raw. They eat it anyway. GPS says drive into a lake. They're swimming. This isn't discipline. It's the inability to adapt when reality contradicts the plan. Intelligent people use instructions as guidelines, then adjust based on feedback. Lower intelligence follows blindly because independent thinking is exhausting. Number 13. Identity by algorithm. Your personality changes with every trend. Last month's aesthetic is this month's cringe. That's not self-expression. That's having no self to express. Psychology calls it herd mentality. True intelligence asks, does this align with my values? Lower intelligence just copies whatever's trending. You're not discovering yourself. You're disappearing into the algorithm. Number 14. Gaming without growth. Plays every night, but never improves. Same mistakes different day. The problem isn't the game, it's the failure to reflect and adapt. Intelligent minds learn patterns and evolve. Lower intelligence repeats mistakes endlessly and blames everything else. Time invested doesn't equal growth. Reflection does. If you're not reflecting, you're not learning. Number 15. Blind trend chasing. Every week, a new challenge, a new dance, and you do it without asking why. This isn't creativity, it's herd mentality on steroids. Humans copy others to feel safe. But true intelligence asks, do I even want this? Or am I just afraid of being left out? If your behavior is determined by trends rather than values, you're not living. You're being lived by the algorithm. Now for the brutal truth. Low intelligence isn't genetic destiny. It's the compound interest of terrible daily habits. Every day you repeat these patterns, you're literally rewiring your brain to stay stuck. But here's the hope. Neuroplasticity works both ways. Break these habits and your thinking sharpens. Your confidence grows. Even the way people treat you shifts. Most people will listen to this feel uncomfortable, and scroll right back to their brain-rotting routine. 
But if you're different, if you actually want to evolve, then subscribe. Because every week I expose the psychology truths that change lives. The question is, are you brave enough to look at your own habits honestly? Or will you pretend this doesn't apply to you and prove every point I just made?